welcome back to a new video today i'm going to show you guys or talk a little bit about how i taught the kids to read so let's get started so the first thing you want to do is teach a child the sounds i know there's a lot of people who say teach the letters first no teach the sounds first teach both I believe in teaching the sounds first. I didn't do it that way. I actually taught the letters first and then the sounds. And I think that kind of like slowed the process. I feel like if I would have taught the kids to, um, if I would have taught the kids the sounds first, the process of reading would have became, would have been a lot faster, but it still was fast for their age. Um, so uh, here I have a printout. This is just a regular printout I got from online and I printed it out. You can make this yourself. This is pretty easy. You can either put it in little flashcards and kind of like, you know, go like one by one and teach your child that way. It's going to take, it depends on the child's age, but usually it would take about a month or two for the child to really, really know all the sounds, all the letters, um, to identify, like if you show him, you point to like this letter and, you know, he will be able to say it. So this is how I will start. As you see, I also colored all the vowels red and all the consonants green. Y is a vowel slash consonant, so that's why you see it um, red and like a dark green. I also put the number 26 here because that's how many letters are in the alphabet. And I think that's really important for the child to know how many letters are in the alphabet. After the child already learned all their alphabets and all the sounds, and all the vowels and all the consonants, I recommend, um, sorry, I recommend teaching the child two letter blends. So this is A E I O U. So the child would spend around a month, maybe it depends on the child's speed of remembering things. I think a month is enough for each one. Um, just spending with the child going ba, da, fa, ga, ha, ja all the way and this is just blending so the child would from here already know that b makes b and a makes a ba so you know that's the reason why i recommend sounds right away because i feel like letters could be the letter name could be taught a lot later but after your child already did all of these um two letter blends they are ready to switch to an actual curriculum i use one second Okay, I use Blumenfeld's Alpha Phonics, a primer for beginning readers. This is by Samuel L. Blumenfeld. He is one of my favorite um, authors when it comes to, you know, the whole topic of reading and phonics. This is an effective step-by-step -step intensive phonic program for teaching reading to beginners of all ages. So this is not only for children, this is also can be used for adults. This is a great, great program. I believe it's like 20 something dollars online um, on Amazon. I printed it out at first. I actually made it and then I printed it out. That's why you see different colors. Um, this has no distraction, no pictures. It's just phonics, all phonics. Also, you can print out or when you buy the workbook, it comes with the teacher's manual um, and you can um, know how to teach each lesson. Just to show you guys, the lessons start like this. A, M, am, a, M, an, a, s, as, a, t, at, a, x, x. And then what you can do down here, excuse me, is just practice a, m, m, s, t, x, right? And then it goes to s, am, sam. A tip that I recommend if you're going to be using this curriculum is to spend about a week with each lesson. When you're first starting, let's say you start with a three-year-old, I recommend doing two weeks with each lesson for the child can really, really become fluent in what the lesson is trying to teach. If you're teaching like a four-year-old whose, you know, memory is a little bit better, you can spend a week with each lesson. So a week with lesson one, a week with lesson two. Um, about a month ago, almost a month ago, I started teaching the kids only, um, when it came to one lesson, I started teaching them 
Monday through Thursday, and then there's certain lessons that I'm going to show you, oops, sorry, that they have sentences, that the child is going to have to read sentences. And I used to do Monday through Friday, Monday through Thursday. Let's just give you an example. But this is really hard to explain if I don't show you. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. If you, your child is doing lesson 19, I would do lesson 19, lesson 19 from Monday to Thursday. And then on Friday, this will be um, lesson 20, and they will read these sentences. And what Friday, what doing this on Friday would tell me is that the child already learned everything that they learned in lesson 19. But when you're first starting, I definitely recommend to spend one week on one to two weeks on each lesson. I didn't start doing that like what I just said about Thursday and Fridays until I see until I saw I'm stuttering that the child was getting better and better at reading. This goes over all the sounds in the English language. By the end of this book, from what I heard, your child is reading in an eighth grade level, maybe even more than an eighth grade level. I'm actually just gonna show you. This is lesson 71. And this is what your child will be reading at lesson 71. It goes over long vowels, short vowels, everything and I'll just show you some of the the words that are in the end so you shall be reading words like she's holding a purse in her lap or sentences like the bird was hurt and thirsty like these are words that like kids won't know until maybe like even fifth grade these are the words that the kids will be learning in lesson 28 words like gymnast and mystic m mystique and system and symbol. These are words that, you know, kids won't learn these at all during their early years. And maybe not even, maybe they will start learning these in middle school. So the great thing about this book is that in certain lessons, the kids have to do copy work. So what you would do is just get a regular um, composition or notebook or paper, and you will have the child do what the lesson requires them you know for example the child would maybe have to write the sentences and that also helps with the child's spelling which is a great thing monique and david um are currently um doing short vowel david will be finishing his short vowel this week and then he'll start in blends next week monique is currently in sentences for short vowel o so that is what I recommend, let's move this, after you finish these two letter blends. So first step, teach your child the sounds or the letter names. Teach the child two letter blends. Get yourself a reading curriculum that you like. I recommend Alpha Phonics. And after that, your child will start reading. That's pretty simple, right? But then, here comes the question of, what should I do for readers? There's a lot of different readers. There's Bob books. I have many, many Bob books that I purchased from the library. Not purchased, but got from the library. The kids have already read. Let's see if I can see it here. Okay. These are all the Bob books. They have Reading Readiness, Starting to Read, Emerging Readers, and Developing Readers. The kids have already read Beginning Readers. I am going to um, get sight words kindergarten in the library. They have already read Advancing Beginners. They already read Rhyming Words. David is currently reading sight words for first grade. Um, David already read all of these. He's technically almost done with the whole Bob book set. So what I recommend as readers, sorry, um, as a supplement, you know, this, the lessons can take less, you know, less than 10 minutes. So... For your child, can you know you don't want to introduce readers right away. You want to introduce readers when you notice that your child is you know really grasping the reading, um, you know grasping blends and grasping letter sounds, and you know you don't want to do it too early, but you don't want to do it too late. I recommend when you notice that your child is really getting better at blending, I recommend getting the beginner set of Bob books. These books are so easy they have little sentences like tim had a flag or jim had a drum they get more and more complex as the books get bigger and bigger 
but I definitely recommend these. These are great, and these, you know, they don't have a lot of colors and pictures as a lot of other readers, but they are great for kids who are learning to read um, the phonetic, phonetic way. The next books that I also recommend is books by Osborne. I think Osborne is a great, great um, series of books for kids who need that extra push um, for blending and who, you know, who are going from Bob books to this books is a great, like, transition. I believe that the, the Bob books teaches them enough blends, enough um, repetition that I believe that Osborne is the next, you know, step to them. And after Osborne, you can move on to books like the Frog and Toad series or books like Little Bear. I know I'm everywhere. I'm kind of like back and forth, but hopefully you guys are understanding what I'm saying. So I'm just going to repeat myself again, just for if I'm making no sense. Teach your child the letter sounds and teach your child the letter sounds and the letter um, words like A and B, teach them those things. Then teach your child two letter blends. Get yourself a curriculum like Alpha Phonics and start teaching your child to read the phonetic way. Um, as a supplement to, to that, readers, get yourself some Bob books. When your child is already done with, um, and you're noticing that Bob books are pretty much like a breeze to them, get yourself some Osborne books. Osborne books are great books because they go really in really deep into the phonetic words like excuse me they explain that y is an alternative spelling of the i sound so but uh, knee right these are great after that if you're noticing your child is going through these as fast get yourself some Arno Lowe books these are my favorite favorite books for kids who are, you know, advanced readers in kindergarten, these are great books. I also recommend Sid Hoff. He has great books. He has the books Danny and the Dinosaur series. Great books. Also recommend Little Bear. Sid Hoff has a Sid Hoff and Arno Loeb are great, great writers. They have so many different books. And these books seem pretty easy for kids, but imagine a kindergarten reading this like this is insane for kindergartens to be reading there's so many books there's a lot of them um i also absolutely love the and i can read books if you're a parent whose child needs a lot of pictures because as you see like these books have pictures but their pictures are not colorful and some kids need like the really colorful pictures if you notice that in your child that he cannot he doesn't do good with the tr transition from, you know, like Osborne books to these books. I recommend the And I Can Read books. They're really, really colorful. And they're really fun for kids. As you see. They're, this one is still And I Can Read, but this one is like a little bit more boring for a lot of kids. Another thing that you can do is on the weekends... You can get yourself some phonic flashcards. I got myself from Flash Kids. This is a great set. I think I paid two something in, in Barnes and Noble. And these are great, great cards. They go over a strong foundation of letters and their various sound combinations. It's essential to reading. Using this set of 86 flashcards, your child will learn to identify the sounds of long and short vowels, consonants, and beginning and ending blends. This deck includes ideas for fun, simple games, and activities to reinforce learning. This is a great way to, when you're going on a trip, um, or maybe on the weekend when your child is, you know, bored and has nothing to do, just sitting down in the table with him or her and just going through these sounds is a great, great thing. Me, I have not yet, um, reached any of, like, blends and stuff with the kids just yet in our reading curriculum, but I have noticed that me doing this, like, once or twice a week has helped tremendously on their reading. Like, they have, they can, like, the code words that... I have not even taught them to decode because of these cards. I also recommend that you, if your child is having trouble with some of the words in the alpha phonics or in any of their curriculum, to write them down in flashcards and just, you know, go over them with them, go over it with them. Um, what else do I recommend? I have a lot of the Osborne books, if you guys are wondering. Okay, one second. 
I also recommend reading to your children a lot. I think that that's one of the most important things if your child wants to learn to read or if you want to teach your child to read is to read them a lot. I had a moment where I, where I was reading to the kids a lot and then I stopped because the kids started reading on their own. But I feel like it's super important to read to the kids to see you reading a lot because then they're going to love reading as well. I have more Bob books here that um, that the kids can read as you see. These are the sets of Bob books that you can pick up. And let me actually get this here. If your child is struggling with the comp her his or her confidence in reading and her speed um, when it comes to reading, I recommend the Dick and Jane. But the only reason I don't recommend the Dick and Jane is to actually, like, it's... How do I describe it? It's like a reader. If you want your child to start reading books, the Dick and Jane series is not that good. Um, because it's like, you don't want books to be too repetitive. And I feel like this book is too repetitive for my for my liking. It's a great, great book for kids who are struggling and who need confidence in reading and who need, um, you know, their speed to be fixed. But overall, this book is not that good for other stuff. But I think that that's it. I think I mentioned everything. Um, let's just walk. <laughs> As you see, I have a lot of stuff. There's so many other ways to teach reading. Um, oh, another way is, I don't recommend this way. Sorry. Okay. Sight words. This is the Dolch Complete Sight Word List. <clears throat> and I used to do sight words a lot when the kids started first learning to read. Because I have heard, I heard a lot of good things about sight words. Um... There, the school that the kids go to recommends sight words. At, you know, public schools recommend sight words nowadays. This, that's the way that they can't talk. That's the way that they teach reading. But I did not want to teach the kids reading by sight words only. So what I do is every month I, I started in February. Every month I do the give this the, <laughs> I give the kids a test. And this test is them reading to me all the sight words that are here. These are first, pre-primer, primer, first grade, second grade, third grade, and nouns. These sight words are from Dolch. I definitely recommend if you do want to teach your child to read by sight words to pick up the Dolch. They're free copy online. The kids in February, February 8th, 2019, Monique got 33 wrong and David got 2 wrong. Out of all of these words, they got those wrongs. That's insane to me. Like, I'm sorry, I screamed. But that's insane to me that the kids, you know, they're learning to read phonetically. And, you know, they can read all these words at the same level that a child who's able to read by sight can read. If that makes sense. Like, I'm teaching them phonetically. And I believe phonics is the best way to teach reading. And I feel like if you are going to introduce sight words, do it like I am. Once a month, just practice sight words. That's it. Don't make it a big priority in teaching reading because I feel like your child would not do really good in it. But that's pretty much it. That's all. Sorry about my plates. <laughs> that's all I recommend. Sorry if I missed anything. If I did, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.